Fun-loving, outgoing, and adventurous were some of the words used to describe Holly Lynn Moore. So when she was found lifeless, suspended in her closet by an electrical cord, it was a shock. Officials concluded a self-inflicted act, but Holly's family and friends, they didn't believe that. They knew someone had set her up and staged it to look like Holly took her own life. So who did it? Let's find out. Holly was born in Castle Rock, Colorado to Shelly and Ray Moore. Holly had one older sister and a dog. At the age of 19, Holly was studying engineering in college, full time, teaching figure skating, and serving as a sole caretaker of her quadriplegic mother. Whew, that's a lot to do at 19. Due to the pressure of school, work, and her home life, Holly was diagnosed with mild depression and was put on antidepressants. She seemed to be doing well on medication and was still her happy, bubbly self. I like this girl. I hope everything turns out well for her. The day before Holly's passing, she met up with her dad, Ray. They got ice cream and talked about Holly's upcoming ski trip. Oh, so cute. Ray said his daughter was in a great mood the whole time that they were together. But the following morning, no one had heard from Holly. She was supposed to give her sister, April, a ride to work that day. After calling Holly multiple times with no answer, April became worried. She called Ray to see if he could get a hold of his daughter. Holly's roommate answered and said something along the lines of, hello, mister, you better come quick. Sh she's not breathing. That's not alarming at all. Ray immediately drove to Holly's apartment. Holly recently moved into an apartment with her former coworker and friend, Zach. Zach came home at 10.30 that night and then woke up to find Holly dangling from the rod in her closet with an electric cord around her neck. So Holly also had 10 names written in red pen on her left thigh. Police arrived on the scene and deemed Holly's passing as her own doing. They also mentioned that Holly had a 45 and medication that she could have ended her life with. Her family didn't understand why she would want to take the most painful way out. So if Holly didn't do it, then who did? Her family believed it was her ex-boyfriend. Earlier that year, Holly was dating a guy named Steven. He was in the army and lived on a military base about two hours away from Castle Rock. Holly and Steven dated for seven months. And during their relationship, the couple seemed very happy. I, I did some digging and on their Facebook wall, that's, that's where they showed their happiness. But like every other couple, they had issues behind the scenes. Steven, however, had serious anger issues. According to Holly's family, Stephen was also very rude and very degrading. Despite their bumpy relationship, the two remained in touch after the breakup. On Holly's 19th birthday, Stephen, Holly, and her sister April were all hanging out. Holly and Stephen got into a tiff after he tried giving her birthday spankings. In front of the sister? Now that, that's, that's a bit weird. Things escalated and Stephen ended up wrapping his own hands around Holly and picking her up off the ground. That's some serious anger issues. April panicked and screamed at Steven, begging for him to put her sister down. Finally he did, but this instance proves his level of anger and capability to do even worse. I mean, this guy's trash. The night before Holly's passing, text messages show that Steven accused Holly of hooking up with her roommate, Zach. She texted Steven, you don't deserve a goodbye, and then sent photos of the names written on her leg. This evidence is what led to the initial conclusion of self-harm. Desperate for answers, Holly's family hired their own team of investigators to revisit the details of the scene in depth. They noticed quite a few red flags that were overlooked by the original team. Like, first of all, the rod that Holly was found hanging from is five foot three inches, but Holly is six feet tall, which doesn't add up. But when she was found, Holly's fingers were caught in the electrical cord. It looked like she was possibly trying to free herself. Next, her room was meticulously clean. Her shoes were lined up perfectly. Everything was polished and organized. Sounds like my room. And there were no fingerprints found on any doorknobs leading to the closet. So if Holly had done this herself, her prints would most likely have been found somewhere. The strategic way for her room was cleaned and organized did not match her style. In fact, Holly was known to be a messy person. Basically, someone came in, knocked out Holly, staged it to look like she did it, and then cleaned her room. The investigators said that the writing on Holly's leg was written by at least two people. The mark on her neck showed signs of immense force that could not have been applied solely by Holly. So Holly's x-rays showed that her right collarbone was broken. This means that she would not have been able to move her right arm easily, let alone wrap the cord around herself and position her body 
in the way that she was found. Due to all these findings, the world famous, or we're saying world famous, medical examiner, Dr. Eklen Boom, Eklen Boom, I hope I said that right, concluded Holly's passing was not her own doing. It was performed by somebody else. The police turned over Holly's case to state investigators, and they have yet to take further action. Sketchy ex-boyfriends are never fun to deal with, but Holly's was on another level. Is he responsible for her passing? I mean, the signs are all there, like, well, not according to the cops, but clearly overlooked by some key factors in her case. And who knew a clean room would be a dead giveaway? Holly's family's continuing to fight for justice to be served. There's no answer, so I would too. And we are fighting for a rainbow cake to be served.